Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review Crazy Rich Asians, and this film has become kind of a big sleeper hit, and is getting a lot of buzz around a lot of places, it's not dropping at the box office, and more and more people are going out to check this out, and I can see why, it's a lot of fun, it's just a good time, and I'm going to talk about it now. This was directed by John M. Chu, and I feel like Chu brings such a vibrant feel to this film that really adds a lot of energy to it because, and I'll talk about this more, this isn't really like a super unique film. It's, you've probably seen this film before, just not told in this particular way or with this kind of energy, and that's what really worked for me in this film. And how they told the story was really fun. There's a lot of great visual storytelling uh, ways that they put across some of this, especially if there's one particular scene where there's a bunch of text going around to people all across the world, and how they portray that on the screen was interesting and fun and added a lot of energy that made that scene, scene feel a lot more interesting than just, oh my god, let's text a bunch of people. So <clears throat> that kind of stuff in this film, I feel like, makes it stand out among a lot of rom-coms. And it is emotionally resonant. You really do feel for these characters and what they're going through, especially our main two characters and all of the heartache and different kinds of things that they have to deal with the other characters throughout. And there is a fun range of different kinds of characters in this film. A lot of crazy, quirky characters. There's the straight-laced characters. There's serious characters. It's like this kind of film, like romantic comedies, and comedies in general really have to stand out because they're funny and because they're interesting ways of bringing a story together and different kinds of characters. And this film does that and makes itself stand out. And it does deal with some different themes, especially classism. And that's a big central piece of this film, as this is about a young woman who, in our culture, is like an economics professor, and like that would be seen as something to be admired, but in this other culture in Singapore, where this family is like ridiculously rich, she's nothing. And her dealing with the backlash of people thinking she's a gold digger and stuff like that. And really, this film looks very vibrant and beautiful. The colors are amazing, how this is shot, and some of the storytelling that I already mentioned. Vanja Sernjol, who does the cinematography for this, I think did a really good job of making this a vibrant film that really stands out among other films of this genre. And Brian Tyler does a decent enough job making an interesting score that helped really capture the feel of this film, and I enjoyed some of the musical choices, especially some of the covers that they do throughout. And there's a lot of funny, sharp dialogue throughout the film, and there's some particular characters that really get to eat into what kind of material they're giving. Constance Wu and Henry Golding are our two main characters, and they do really good jobs of being very charming, and you can really feel the chemistry between them. And for a romantic comedy, you it really is based off of the leads, and you really need that to balance this film and to anchor it, and they do a fantastic job. And there's plenty of supporting characters throughout. Michelle Yeoh and Ken Jeong are in this film, but I think the two supporting characters that really feel out, Aquafina plays our main character's best friend, and she's crazy over the top, and so is her family. They're a lot of fun. And then Nico Santos, who plays the really sassy gay cousin in this film, is a real standout, and he brings a particular amount of laughs in this film, and he's great comic relief, but also gives a little perspective on some of the other characters in an interesting way. Now, some of the things that are a bit of a drawback, there are particular scenes in this, because like, this is like a two-hour movie, that it's like, they could have hurried up with this and maybe not spent so much time with this, and it kind of hurt the pacing at moments. And that's really a shame because most of this film has so much energy that you think the pacing is fantastic, but there's certain parts that it's just like, do we need to really spend this much time on it? And honestly, it's a pretty straightforward generic story. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the review, you've seen this before. It's just a matter of seeing it in a different way. And there are some obnoxious stereotypes in this film. And also some of the characters are extremely unlikable to the point where 
they're not even interesting characters. They're just like really mean, obnoxious, stereotypical characters. And there's one particular subplot in this film that I can gather why they had it in the film, but it kind of feels like it distracts from the main point of the story and also feels like it's kind of just like padding runtime. And it might have worked better in the novel of this crazy rich Asians, but in terms of like the actual story here, it feels like those were the scenes that really kind of dragged a little bit for me and kind of took away from the energy of the film. Overall, honestly, if you want to go out and have a fun time this weekend, this is probably the film that I would suggest you go see. It's a lot of fun. There's things for everybody to enjoy. Is it the world's greatest film? No, but I think it's a lot of fun. It's enjoyable. Go check out Crazy Rich Asians, and thank you as always for supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.